this car over my shoulder here, you might have heard a little bit about it. Um, it's a Y62 Series 5 TIL, but it's very special. We've, we've coined it the Samurai, Dash Samurai, and it's gonna be built by 4x4 DNA. This is, the, the reason we're doing this car is because I feel there's a gap with what Nissan has done uh, in the market and we have left with a 12 year old interior, a bunch of things that Nissan could have changed with the Y62s but hasn't. So we're taking upon ourselves to build the car that we think Nissan should have built. I'm not gonna go into detail exactly what's happening, but it's fair to say this would be something that would be in the uh, realm of GR Sport money and um, that you would just be able to buy at the end of it. When, once we've built it, it might take us three months or so, um, but once it's built, you can come in and buy it and you know, if it goes quickly, we'll order another one and do it again. It's gonna be a numbered vehicle. So this is Samurai 001. The first episode of this is gonna be about the exhaust. Um, so we have a new Samurai exhaust we've been working on for um, almost 12 months now, waiting for this car to arrive. Uh, it's, again, not built to a price point. It's built to exactly what we wanted to get a Y62 to sound the way it should. Um, with premium materials, everything's built like better, stronger, um, bigger flanges, uh, Wait until you see the exhaust. I'm gonna hand over to Steve-O and he's gonna start fitting it up to the Samurai. All right, so we decided to take a rear muffler, stand it off, and I wanted to assess why these things are so quiet. But when you give it some beams, you can just hear that V8 note. So in our eyes, and the time we have, we cut one open. Are we surprised to see what's inside of these things? <laughs> have a look at this. So from the engine, you got this, we thought was a restrictor here, and the headers, nah. Now your restrictor comes from all this over-engineered, crazy stuff that they've put in here. And it's got a dead end up here. It's physically got nothing to go to. So it's got to come out of these little puny holes to then divert into this section. I don't know about you, Dave, but I think I've seen one of them in my kitchen. <laughs> Isn't that what you like, great? Your fizzes yeah. and your cheese and yeah, anyway. Strain the water. Yeah. So, and then it diverts back through these holes to exit. But then in our eyes, in the, in, in the wisdom of making these quiet, but giving you that little bit of noise at the open uh, throttle, I thought, what's this? It's spring loaded. Well, oh, that's gonna let us down in, in a few years time when that gets all corroded. I think I've seen a few of these full of water too. I filled up around here, and it's a bloody flapper. It's spring-loaded flapper. So when you boot it and it can't physically force any more gases out, it opens up that flapper to actually let the rest of the exhaust go through the cheese grater and then out the pipe. So there's your restriction, eh? <laughs> put a set of, uh, put, a, put a nice muffler straight through, good packing, and twin in, twin out with the Samurai system. I think we've nailed it, mate. I've never seen that before. Never have I. That's quite convoluted. And I think that's uh, well and truly over-engineered. Yeah. So, all right, cool. check it out. We had a few boxes to tick off. Um, we had to make sure it fitted around a long range tank. We had to make sure it looked pretty when you put a razzle bar on. I think that's gonna look good sitting there tucked up high. It does look good. Um, Obviously, uh, catalytes are an option. Uh, catalytes if you want it to sound louder, which is great, because you can put a cat back system on. And then, if you think, you know what, I like it, but I just want to be a little bit louder, you can put those rear catalyte pipes in. Now these patrols, variable valve starts opening, you start to get that thong slap it around about three and a half, four thousand RPM. I didn't really like it. Like when we go out to the sand dunes and you start building up the hills, it starts to get that embarrassing bit of uh, Bogan thong slap. And I said, come man, we've got to make something that sounds good. And and David tripped over it doing over a couple of Santa mufflers with twin in pipes and twin out. And I said, wow, that, that really sounds what I like. Like, that, that's a good note. Okay, you know, so then we started back around with uh, hex pieces, um, twin in, twin out, blending into one. And I thought, let's just do 
something that we love. Like, let's get the three inch pipe going all the way through, let's get rid of the gases faster, let's do the X pipe, let's blend it. The more we mix up with these gases coming through into this center muffler, that's straight through with like, um, you know, the, the, the correct packing to give you a good note, which I can show you actually. If I was to, hopefully it comes down on camera, but to see in there, you can see that it's got like, I've got the hole in the X, X pipe, and then going down to the centre section where it goes through the muffler, it's straight through, but then it's got the, all those little holes to go through there, and then it gives you the, the correct packing that's in there to be able to give you an awesome note. So, exiting, the, uh, exiting out of the muffler is also a nice smooth exit. So the smoother, you know, that's my experience in life. With, you know, when you do like uh, head work and all that, the smoother you can get that air to flow through. The more performance, the better it was. Um, so putting David's experience, my experience, the sounds that we've put over the last five years into one, you know, center muffler to make this sound great, it's worked. I've had it on my car, I tow with it. You know, like the certain RPM when you're towing 1900 RPM, you sort of get that uh, real bad drone. You're not getting it. You know you've got an exhaust, but you're not getting that, that drone where the kids are like, well, that changed gear. Um, like, I want it to look good. Uh, the back pressure, I want to keep. There's so many ups to it. Just ticking all the boxes so far. It's uh, sitting on the car, it's hanging nice. Yeah. Yeah in this particular kit. We've gone with these gaskets. So all these gaskets come with a, um, a fire ring which sits inside which is going to be collapsed in and pinched nice. But uh, we've got the graphite gasket on the outside now, not the one with all the little holes through it. So when we put all this stuff on and start putting it on the car, we have got perfect gaskets, it's going to crush up nice, it's not going to be the wrong gaskets which we've seen before where people have had the thicker gasket, it hasn't crushed up that and then suddenly it blows out the side, then you get an enormous amount of heat that comes through here and it can distort these um, flanges, so I've got all the correct gas gaskets, I don't even use silicon, I pretty much just put them on, lock them up and they're nice and they seal for ages. Like I, I physically can go back to my car now and have a look. I've got no water droplets coming out. I've got no rust. Everything's tight. It's just another thing that works. These nuts, um, we've used like the genuine style Nissan nut that as the nuts goes on the bolt, sorry I didn't really prepare myself right here. So as you drive that bolt through, it's collapsed at the top which distorts the, the shape of it. So as it goes on, it doesn't go any further, but as you use a 17 mil and a 14 mil and start to drive it on, that stays on, that bites in, and it'll stay on and stop coming loose. Excited to be able to actually get this on a car, and that's gonna be on the Samurai. I want to talk a bit about um, the material that we make these exhausts out of. So your basic sort of entry level stainless steel is a 409. Um, you know it's okay but it's not the best um, if you want to that's probably what the factory exhaust is made out of if you want to go to a high grade stainless steel it's uh, a 304 except um, the one downside with 304 is the heat cycling so as you're getting hot and then cold and hot and then cold it doesn't like going between two different temperatures let alone a water crossing so um, this is kind of why we designed it this way so we've got two pipes going in to the muffler box and then two going out. So many times on exhausts that are made out of 304, we see um, a crack around here because you've got the pressure of two pipes coming in and it can only get out one hole. So um, that's why we've done two pipes in, two pipes out. And the material we're using now is a 441 stainless steel. Duck under here. Uh, 441 is, um, there's more chrome in the stainless. Um, so that one makes it a bit shinier, which is kind of nice to look at, but more so for the effect of heat cycling. So when it's going from hot to cold, hot to cold, like these petrol V8 motors do, we're going to see less problems with welds at the back here.
I think this is going to last much longer than you know some of the other ones we've seen. So as I was saying, some of the boxes that we had to tick off was we had to get that muffler to get up high. So when you fit a Rosler bar, it didn't look so hideous and in your face, stick out like dog's balls. Now it sits in there, it looks pretty and it's got to get around the LRA long range tank plus look good underneath these Rosler bars. Have a look at that. Beautifully positioned, out of the way, long range tank's going to sit on that chassis line. It works. Right, it's time to see what this thing sounds like. 